Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Indian PM Modi's no war comment to Putin lauded by France and United States. Pakistan again jacks up petrol price, soaring inflation irks residents amid floods. And Nepal's President Bhandari refuses to ratify a citizenship bill. And now for all the details. The United States and France have welcomed Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's remarks to Russian President Vladimir Putin that now was not the time for war. New Delhi's sharpest public response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. PM Modi had spoken regularly to Putin since the war began in February, seeking dialogue and peace talks but without publicly condemning the war. The United States and France have welcomed Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's comment to Russian President Vladimir Putin that now was not the time for war, New Delhi's sharpest public response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Modi made the remarks during a meeting in Uzbekistan last week and told Putin, today's era is not an era of war and that democracy, diplomacy and dialogue kept the world together. Putin responded that he knew Modi's concerns over the conflict and said, we will do everything to stop this as soon as possible. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan during a news conference on Tuesday hailed Modi's stance and said, Washington would like to see every country in the world making that case. What Prime Minister Modi said, a statement of principle on behalf of what he believes is right and just, uh, was very much welcomed by the United States and for uh, the Indian leadership, uh, which has long-standing relationships in Moscow from the very top all the way through the Russian government, to continue to reinforce that message that now is the time for war to end. French President Emmanuel Macron also mentioned PM Modi's remarks in his speech at the United Nations on Tuesday and said, Modi was right when he said, the time is not for war. The Indian Prime Minister had spoken regularly to Putin since the war began in February seeking dialogue and peace talks, but without publicly condemning the war. India's biggest defence provider for years, Russia is now a big supplier of oil and coal too. Indian Navy Chief Admiral R. Harikumar on Tuesday said that China has kept on increasing its presence, not just on land but also on maritime borders and is still a formidable challenge. The remarks came two weeks after India and China announced disengagement at a friction point in their border in eastern Ladakh, where they have been locked in a confrontational position since 2020. Indian Navy Chief Admiral R. Hari Kumar on Tuesday said that China is still a formidable challenge as it has kept on increasing its presence, not just on land but also on maritime borders by leveraging anti-piracy operations to normalize its naval presence in the Indian Ocean region. Kumar added that terrorism is still a major security threat in addition to the existing military challenges and staying one step ahead of constantly innovative tactics enabled by niche technologies is still a challenge that persists. China remains a formidable challenge and has increased its presence not only along our land borders but also in the maritime domain by leveraging anti-piracy operations to normalize its naval presence in the Indian Ocean region. To our west, Pakistan, despite economic constraints, has continued its military modernization. The remarks came two weeks after Indian and Chinese soldiers this week disengaged at the remote Himalayan border in Ladakh after more than two years of a standoff. Moving on, a senior research analyst at the European Foundation for South Asian Studies, 
told the UNHRC session in Geneva this week that enforced disappearances continue to be a significant political issue in Central and South Asia. She particularly mentioned Pakistan and said it has not just failed to effectively criminalize enforced disappearances but has also failed to collaborate with relevant investigation bodies. Joanna Barakova, a senior research analyst at European Foundation for South Asian Studies, EFSAS, told the UNHRC session in Geneva this week that enforced disappearances continue to be a significant political issue in Central and South Asia. She said the recent UN report on China is a great example as it highlights Beijing's systematic atrocities against the Uyghur population. She also mentioned Pakistan and said it has not just failed to effectively criminalize and force disappearances, but has also failed to collaborate with relevant UN bodies and investigations. Human rights activists have long claimed that enforced disappearances take place in Balochistan and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, where Pakistani security forces operate with impunity and the government has repeatedly failed to act against such inhuman crimes. The case of Pakistan is particularly concerning. Pakistan has not just failed to effectively criminalize and enforce disappearances, but has also failed to collaborate with relevant UN bodies and investigations. Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah on Tuesday claimed that those who are involved in enforced disappearances of political workers, human rights activists and other individuals are the violators of the constitution and conceded the government had limited rate in this regard. He said he has taken up the matter after three MQM party workers were found brutally killed in Sindh province years after their disappearance. MQM has alleged they were extrajudicially killed as they were reportedly missing for several years after being arrested by paramilitary rangers. The Pakistan government has once again increased prices of petrol in just one week, raising worries for locals who are irked with already rampant inflation. Residents in Karachi city said they are fed up of frequent price hikes and the flood situation amid the economic crisis has also added to their woes. In just nearly a week, Pakistan government has once again announced a hike in petrol price by rupees 1.45 per litre, a notification from the finance division released early Wednesday said. After the changes in the price, petrol will now be available for Rs 237.43 per litre. The new price will be effective from September 21st, the finance division said. This comes at a time when Pakistan is experiencing its worst floods in decades that has also created food shortages amid the ongoing financial crisis. Residents in Karachi city said prices of all essentials, including vegetables and fruits, have all soared as devastating rains have ruined crops and disrupted supplies. They lamented they don't see any ray of hope. क्योंकि आगे जो किसी से पूछ लो रेडी वाले से तो वो कहता है भाईजान आगे से फ्रूट आ नहीं रहे सब्जी वाले से पूछ लो वो कह रहा है भाईजान सारा कुछ खत्म हो गया यहां पे सब्जी आ नहीं रही है तो क्या रास्ते बंद हैं रास्ते खराब हो गए हैं पुल हैं गिर गए पाकिस्तान्स 220 मिलियन पीपल वर ऑलरेडी फेसिंग रैंपेंट इन्फ्लेशन बिफोर द कैटास्ट्रोफिक फ्लड्स हिट एंड द इकॉनमी इज इन टर्मोइल विद फास्ट प्लीडिंग फॉरेन रिजर्व्स ऑफिशियल्स से दैट मोर देन 2 मिलियन एकर्स ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल लैंड हैज बीन फ्लडेड अक्रॉस पाकिस्तान विद द डिलूज डिस्ट्रॉइंग मोर स्टैंडिंग क्रॉप्स एंड प्रिवेंटिंग फार्मर्स फ्रॉम सोइंग न्यू वंस द फ्लड्स हैव अफेक्टेड मोर देन 33 मिलियन पीपल एंड किल्ड ओवर 1500 सो फार एक्टिविस्ट्स मेड इमोशनल अपील्स एट द यूनाइटेड नेशंस दिस वीक टू प्रोटेक्ट अफगान गर्ल्स एजुकेशन as schools have remained shut for them in Afghanistan for over a year now. The Taliban has said they are working on a way to open them again in accordance with their interpretation of Islamic law. While pleading with world leaders and the United Nations to protect the education and rights of women in Afghanistan, a year after the Taliban took over, 20-year-old Somaya Faruqi, activist and former captain of the Afghan girls' robotics team, got teary-eyed. 
Faruqi, who now attends college in the U.S., left Afghanistan in August last year when the Islamist Taliban seized power and the international forces withdrew after a 20-year war. She urged world leaders to unite and demand the reopening of girls' schools that have remained shut for over a year now and protection of girls' and women's rights. This week, you are all here to propose solutions to transform education to all. But you must not forget these who left behind, those who are not lucky enough to be at school at all. Show your solidarity with me and millions of Afghan girls. Nobel Peace Prize winner Malala Yousafzai, who was shot by a Taliban gunman in Pakistan as she left school in 2012, also shided leaders at the UN event for lack of action. In March, the Taliban made a U-turn on a promise to open girls' high schools and thousands of women have been pushed out of the workforce because of tighter restrictions and Afghanistan's economic crisis. On Tuesday, the Taliban announced a major cabinet reshuffle as part of which Acting Education Minister Nurullah Munir would be replaced in the role by the head of Kandahar's Provincial Council, Malvi Habibullah Agha, a spokesperson informed. No reason was, however, given for the reshuffle. The Taliban say that since March they have been working on a way of opening girls' high schools in accordance with their interpretation of Islamic law. In news from Nepal, Nepal's President Vidya Devi Bhandari has refused to enact the controversial citizenship bill sent to her for final assent by both houses of the parliament. The constitution required her to ratify the bill by Tuesday midnight after a 15-day deadline, but her decision has made it a case of complete constitutional breakdown, local media reported. Nepal's President Bidya Devi Bhandari on Tuesday refused to ratify the citizenship bill which was passed twice by both the houses of parliament within the mandatory deadline that expired Tuesday midnight. President Bhandari chose not to ratify the bill after consultation with cross-section of the society and suggestion that the issue merited wider debate and consensus. She missed the deadline deliberately as tenure of the current house and its 72 hours prior to deadline, local media reported. The bill which defines the entitlement for citizenship based on marital ground and ensures non-voting citizenship to non-resident Nepalis living in non-SAR countries was reviewed and sent back to the President for ratification. The President had earlier sought clarification on several issues from the Parliament. The Constitution mandates that in such a case the President should approve the bill not beyond 15 days after both the Houses approve and send it back to the President. But the House of Representatives completed its tenure and lapsed 48 hours before the mandatory 15 days period. PM Deuba had met the President twice with requests not to put the bill on hold as there were many stateless people. Ruling coalition ally CPN Maoist Centre Chairman Pushp Kamal Dahel has even publicly asked for President's resignation, while her party, the main opposition CPN UML, has defended her stand. This comes just two months before the general election in November, making the situation a case of complete constitutional breakdown, local media reports stated. Artisans in India have begun making idols of Hindu goddess Durga ahead of the annual Durga Puja festival. The festival is celebrated annually during the seventh month of the Hindu calendar, which typically falls between September and October. As the Hindu festive season of Durga Puja is around the corner, idol makers in Udaipur in India's northwestern Rajasthan state have begun their artistic work for the upcoming festival. Idol makers every year create figurines of Goddess Durga out of the straw, shaf, clay and cow dung to be installed in pandals or makeshift tents for worship during the festival. The festival is celebrated annually during the seventh month of the Hindu calendar which typically falls between September and October. Similar scenes are being witnessed in Guwahati city in northeastern Assam state 
where preparations are in full swing to decorate pandals with different themes. Members of the Bishnupur Puja Celebration Committee said this year they are creating Durga Puja Pandal as Nepal's Lumbini, which is the birthplace of Lord Gautam Buddha. Durga Puja festival is widely celebrated across India, especially in the states of West Bengal, Tripura and Assam. It is believed that during the festival, Goddess Durga descends on earth to rid it of demons and bless her devotees with happiness and prosperity. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.